There we go. All right, so we're recording now. So um, just to catch a couple things I said before I started recording, my name is Brian Lerman. I'm the program director uh, for Code Kentucky, uh, work for Kentucky Anna Works here in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, Shannon Siders is actually the operations manager who would usually be giving this talk. Uh, she just wasn't able to make it tonight. And so, yeah, we're here to talk about Code Kentucky, what to expect, uh, what's involved, why you should participate, um, and basically uh, what you're going to be doing for the next uh, few weeks or uh, months uh, if you uh, continue through the program. So sharing my screen, uh, let's see. There we go. And um, can you all see my screen? Just nod on camera or something? Yes. OK, cool. Multiple nods. All right. So uh, this is what we're calling the fall 2021 information session. So everybody found their way here because you got an email from us. You signed up online. Uh, we contacted you about uh, getting started. And we're offering this information session just because there's a lot of information that we can cover in one email um, and to answer any questions you all may have. So um, first of all, just a quick overview. This is a free to participate uh, program. Uh, designed to prepare adults for a new career in technology. Um, and it's all about learning in-demand tech skills for uh, both the region, the nation, and the world uh, with the goal of landing an entry-level job in software development. Um, and so basically, uh, we're here to solve a technology skills gap. People need tech skills. Employers want people with tech skills. So we're trying to help bridge that gap. Um, and the way we do this, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a future slide, but we basically combine online learning uh, with uh, mentor-led classes, mentors being uh, volunteers who all have IT uh, profession, uh, pr uh, professional backgrounds. Uh, we do workshops on things like resume writing and, and interview preparation, help you with job preparedness, get you introduced to some employers, and basically just help you explore this career. Um, we want to be super transparent up front. We're not some magic job program that you complete this and at the end of it, congratulations, here's your $100,000 job. I wish it worked that way, but unfortunately it doesn't. So I'm, I'm being super transparent with everybody up front. Our goal here is to expose you to this, get you some learning, see if it's of interest to you, and then we'll help you while you teach yourself uh, what you need to know to get into this field. Um, it's a rewarding field. You uh, I used to be a software developer myself before I started running this program. And, um, you know, it's challenging. It's, you know, there's problem solving. You work your mind. It's interesting. You can make decent money with it. Um, but it is a difficult field to get into. Um, so we want to be super transparent with everybody up front. What's going on here? Uh, and yeah, I mentioned, uh, I think before recording, that this is a partnership between three workforce investment boards. Um, myself and Shannon were with Kentucky Anna Works uh, in Louisville. And then uh, we're in partnership with the Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program, EKSEP, as well as the Northern Kentucky Area Development District, or NKAD. So um, what will we be learning? So first of all, uh, the program is actually uh, two 12-week long courses. Uh, we're looking to start early September. And during each of those 12-week courses, uh, we cover one programming language. So if you're not familiar with software development, totally fine. That's the expectation. Uh, but the way software development works is uh, you've heard it as writing code or programming. And basically, you're writing a big chunk of commands and, and code that make computers do what they do. So uh, whether that's displaying a website, running an application, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and just like human languages, you can say the same thing in different languages, You know, English, Spanish, Japanese, whatever the case may be, software development works the same way. There's languages called Python, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript. Um, they all do essentially the same thing, just in different specialized ways. And so there's all kinds of languages out there that we can offer. Companies ask for lots of different things. Um, and so we're going to try and offer a variety over the next uh, year or so of the program to choose from and, and give you some options to learn in this program. And uh, each of these 12 week courses focuses on one of those languages. Um, so the first course that we're planning for uh, this inaugural launch uh, that will start in a few weeks is um, a, in what's called front end web development. It's actually a family of languages. You may have heard of HTML, 
CSS, and JavaScript. These are the three main tools that go into uh, developing web websites. Um, and so that's what our first class is going to focus on. And then the 12 weeks after that, we'll have um, a couple options for you to pick from based on what your interest may be. Um, and we're trying to cater those uh, languages that we offer to what's in demand in the market. So hopefully you're learning skills that uh, an employer in your region or maybe remotely might be interested in. Um, and yeah, we also have to work with mentors, our volunteers to make sure they know the language and have the time availability. So, um, you know, it's our first time running this in these regions. So uh, you guys are our pilot class. We're gonna experiment on you a little bit. Uh, so just bear with us as we kind of figure out what works. Um, you know, what works in Louisville may not work in Northern or Eastern Kentucky. So um, yeah, but, um, and I'll even add that, like being that adaptable type of person, that's just like, cool, I'm learning this today. I'm all right with that. Like that attitude is like seriously one of the best things you can have in the tech world because tech changes every day. You know, there's a new language coming out. Uh, there's a new system update. There's a new security vulnerability, you name it. And as tech professionals, we can't be like, well, hope the new guy can fix it because I never learned that. That's not the right answer. Uh, the right answer in tech is let me go do some research, see how somebody else solved this. Um, so if you're that, you know, adaptable kind of person, you've got the right attitude. Um, but yeah, so uh, what do these jobs all lead to? Um, there's not a standardized job title that we could say. Um, every company has their own style, their own naming scheme. Um, I've seen companies where they say junior is your entry level position or associate sometimes, sometimes they call you just software engineer. These are a lot of common job titles we see web developer, software developer, application developer, software engineer, data analyst, quality assurance tester, business analyst. There's all kinds of stuff we've seen. Um, just for reference in code Louisville, uh, in the six years, the program has been running, we've gotten 650 people jobs in technology. Uh, the vast majority of those in software development related positions. And if you look at our data that tracks what their job title is, there's literally hundreds of job titles. So, but ultimately what this boils down to is you're learning to be a software development professional. Um, and so just to give you a little insight what a software developer does, um, I already talked a little bit about this that you put together code uh, to make computers do a thing. But basically, um, it's very critical thinking. It's very problem solving. Um, it's it's a pretty heady type uh, of career. And there's a common misperception some folks have that uh, if you were to look at a software developer, they're just like furiously typing away on their computer all day long. But that's not actually what it looks like. Um, the most common experience you have as a software developer is your boss, your customer, your client, whoever it may be need something built like, you know, hey, we've got this application that um, this messaging application that lets us contact all our customers. But now we need an ability to contact three customers at once. Well, that may sound easy at first, but then you have to look into all these pieces and, you know, make sure data privacy is protected and stuff like that. And so when you go and watch software developers work, they're actually researching a lot. They're looking through their code, other code that people have written, they're doing research online about how people have done this. There's a lot of just researching and thinking through these things. Um, a lot of people looking at Google if you walk around a software development office. So, uh, but yeah, um, but what's super cool about learning software development is that every industry needs software. I mean, you would be hard pressed to find a sizable industry that doesn't have use for computers and, and software and the internet and things like that. So um, we found a lot of success in Code Global with people that have previous backgrounds using that to combine with their tech skills. Um, for example, we had a nurse who was just done being a nurse. She was ready to move on to something else. She went through the program, learned how to do software development, got hired back at her hospital again, but this time as a software developer because she knew the clinical systems in that hospital. She knew what the nurses were doing day to day. So she could talk with the software developers and be like, no, 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 we're developing this wrong. This is going to confuse them. Here's how it should be done. She was fantastic at it. So, you know, all kinds of industries can use those skills. Um, so to dive a little bit more into the specifics of how this works, um, once you get into the program, 
um, there are two 12 week courses, each focusing on language, and we're using a tool called Pluralsight. Um, that's one of a great many uh, websites out there that offer training videos and courses and stuff like that in software development. Uh, we'll get you access to this um, so you can go through some courses, learn those things. But then in addition to doing this learning on your own each week, you're also going to be coming to uh, class meetings, uh, workshops, um, we call it different things. But uh, currently, we're planning for those to be online um, via Zoom. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, that way, we can reach as many as pe people as possible. We may have in-person options in the future. We kind of need to wait and see how things go, uh, both with interest and in, uh, as well as this whole, you know, COVID thing going on. But yeah, so you're going to do this online work, you're going to be watching some videos, doing some challenges, following along with the online instructors, pre-recorded videos thing. But then once a week in the evenings, so for those working, you can still do this. Um, you're going to come to class 6 to 8 p.m. one night a week. During that class, you're going to work with what we call mentors. They're volunteers. They're going to help you understand things that are going on in that online work. They're going to show you some projects and demonstrations. They're going to answer your questions. They're basically just going to be there to make sure that you have your needs met, that you're getting your questions answered and not getting stuck uh, you know, for days at a time. Um, and then on top of that, we're, we're going to mix in some job readiness workshops. So we're going to help you write your resume specifically for the tech world. Um, and we're going to um, give you some you know, individual career coaching. We're going to help you identify local employers, remote employers. Um, and help point you in the direction so that you can start applying for jobs and, and hopefully land that job. Um, there are weekly assignments. Uh, you know, there's those plural site videos I talked about that you have to go through each week. Um, and they do sometimes require you to code along and write the code yourself. Um, there's also, in addition to those assignments, there's a final project that's due at the end of the session. Um, so you'll have to take what you've learned over nine or 10 weeks of doing plural site and take the last two or three weeks and build your own project, build your own website um, that meets some certain requirements. And the reason that one's so important is um, unlike a lot of industries, software development is does not have a lot of certifications in it. Now the IT side of the world, if you're like actually working on physical computers, you know, fixing computers and stuff like that, or networking, those have certifications. Uh, but in software development, most employers just wanna see can you write code or not? And the best way to do that is to write some code and then put it out there so that they can see it. Um, so ultimately what you'll do in this program is you'll build a portfolio of projects that will uh, basically be your ammunition to get you, yourself a job. You're gonna go and apply to employers. You're gonna put it on your resume and say, here's my projects, I can code. Sometimes these employers even in an interview will be like, show me a project, here's a computer, pull it up. Let's see what you, you can do and you'll have your portfolio ready to go. Um, kind of like with art, you know, somebody could have a degree from college saying, I've got a master's degree of fine arts. Can they actually paint a picture though? Mm -hmm. You know, they could tell you who Picasso was, but could they actually paint? You don't know until you actually see him paint. Works just the same way in software development. So um, yeah, at the end of it, uh, we offer you a certificate of completion uh, from Code Kentucky. Uh, again, for each 12 week course, you you do so you'll have like a front end one and then if you take c sharp with us you know in january then you'd have a c sharp completion or python or whatever language you're going through um you have to go through two courses for to be considered a graduates so again that's two 12 weeks that's the class are starting here soon and then uh hopefully you'd return back for the january class and wrap it up uh in late uh march um and yeah so um Sorry, let me skip ahead, make sure I'm not. OK, so um, there will be an orientation on the 8th uh, of September. Uh, but to get to that orientation, you have to complete the pre-work. And uh, everybody should have gotten information on that about getting into Plural Site and doing the courses there. I'm actually going to show that real quick uh, at the end of my presentation, just to make sure everybody knows what they're looking for. But yeah, basically, um, over the next few weeks, we're going to get you some online courses to make sure this is of interest to you and you can get through this. And then you'll be there hopefully on uh, the 8th, where we'll talk more about getting started, what you need to do. And then the very following week, we'll have our first uh, first class. 
and uh, you'll have your first assignments in Pluralsight and all that stuff. Um, and we're planning to end uh, the week of uh, December 10th. So uh, just to clarify a few expectations in this program, um, it does take about 10 to 15 hours generally. Some people take more, the fewer people take less time than that each week. Um, that time is watching videos, it's following along with them doing some coding, it's doing your project that I told you that will be due at the end of the session. You know, it's it's about 15 hours of work a week. So it's not a you know easy program that you just show up two hours a week and and magically graduate at the end. Um, you're going to have to be sp spending a lot of time and you have to be motivated to do that. You know, you have to keep yourself on task and keep doing this. Um, but yeah, uh, we require regular attendance at the virtual meetups. Um, we certainly recognize everybody has lives, so we build in some absences. Um, you know, if family emergency comes up or you know whatever the case may be, but you do have to be there each week. Uh, if you stop showing up, we just remove you from the program, cut off your your access. So um, we also require you to find networking events. So these are just tech events where you can meet people and start to build your network. Uh, you've, I'm sure, heard that who you know matters. It's very much true in the tech world. Uh, most people I know get their jobs because they get connected with somebody that is hiring. Um, you certainly can get a job by just applying to an open position, but a lot of, a lot of this is networking, getting to know people. So you're actually going to seek out um, at least two events during the 12 weeks and go to them. They can be in person, they can be virtual, um, but we want you to start getting out there and seeing what's going on in the tech world. And then finally, there's that project I talked about that will be due at the end of the 12-week session. Um, and just to clarify a few requirements to make sure everybody here is meeting these, um, we may be checking towards the end, so don't waste your time if you don't meet these requirements. You have to be 18 years of older, 18 years of age or older by the orientation date. Um, you need to have a desire to learn technology. Um, you know, that's not something we can assess. You have to answer that for yourself. But if you're you know, afraid of technology and you have no interest in it, I'll be honest with you, this is probably not the best place for you right now. Um, this is a program that rewards people that are curious, that want to learn this, that want to try something new, that when they get stuck, their response is, let me do some research, figure out what I'm doing wrong, or let me go ask somebody a question and get help. So if you're that kind of person when it comes to technology, this is a great program for you. Um, whoop, we got a little bit of an inconsistency on our slide. So uh, 15 hours, sometimes 20 uh, per week. I'll, I'll fix that after this presentation's over. Uh, but yeah, we need we expect you to dedicate that time. You're not going to be successful if you're not able to. You do need to live in one of these counties. So there's 23 Eastern Kentucky counties, uh, I believe eight Northern Kentucky counties, and then a handful of Ohio and one Indiana county that are eligible for this program. Um, so if you're not in one of those, let us know. Uh, we'll see if there's some other options for you, but uh, you do have to live there. Um, and it's probably not going to matter for your all's class, but uh, in future classes, once we get ramped up and have more people signing up, um, there will be a priority queue given. Um, it's possible if every single person that starts the pre-work completes it, that we might have to implement a priority queue um, of who gets in the class, because we do have a limited number of seats uh, in the class. And just so you know, that priority would be based on need. So there are some specific uh, government-defined criteria um, like, you know, are you a veteran, low income, disability, things like that, that we would put to the front of the line. And then after that, anybody who signs up um, that meets these other requirements would get in. But again, I'm pretty sure for this class, everybody who signed up that meets the requirements will get in. Um, and then, yeah, so um, let's talk about the process that we're in the middle of right now and make sure everybody's on the same page. So, um, Everyone first signed up online. That was just our interest form. Uh, we sent you an application, which you have filled out. That's how you got this information about this meeting tonight. Um, so what, what's next is the pre-work. Everyone has been assigned the pre-work by this point, uh, but it's okay if you waited till, to learn more about the program tonight to get started. But the pre-work is an assessment. It is our way of us making sure you're gonna be, uh, you have at least some minimum uh, ability to go through this project process. Uh, but it's also for you to determine if this is a thing you can, A, uh, see yourself doing 
you know, you'll get to see what writing code is like. And B, do you have the time to go through this? Um, so I'm going to tell everybody up front, pre-work is not a short thing. It's not something you knock out in an hour or two. Um, there's like 10 or 15 hours worth of videos and content to get through. But we've given you plenty of time. Uh, we've got a deadline of August 22nd. So you got, uh, was it two weeks and change, three weeks? Um, yeah, I think that's three weeks from the Sunday. Uh, that's due. And so you got to complete it by the end of that August 22nd deadline at 11.59 at night. We'll come in the next morning and check it. And if you don't complete it, uh, you're not going to be able to participate in the program. Um, this is, like I said, our way of just making sure it's a good place for everybody to be. Um, so once you complete that pre-work, we'll get you more information on the orientation. It'll be virtual, just like this one over Zoom. And, uh, and then once you do the orientation, we'll get you information on, on attending those classes. Um, and then I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of Pluralsight and make a couple more comments. Yeah. And then we'll take your questions. So let's see. Um, could I get one more confirmation that I'm showing Pluralsight now? Everyone see like the black screen says code contact rework. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So you may not have logged in yet. Totally okay if you haven't. Um, this is plural site. Uh, it's plural as in multiple site as in vision dot com. Uh, and um, you should have gotten an email uh, inviting you to join plural site. It might have come from Code Louisville, just that FYI, because Code is the original, so it's owns the uh, the platform right now or owns our account. Um, but yeah, you should have gotten an email. If you don't see it, check your spam folder. It does sometimes go there. And if you still don't see it after that, just email the info at account and uh, we'll be happy to figure out what's going on. But yeah, um, when you log into Pluralsight, it's gonna ask you to set up a username and password. Pretty easy, just, you know, just like every website pretty much. Um, and we're using what's called Pluralsight skills. There's something else called Pluralsight flow. So if you see that, don't worry about it. We're all about skills here. And so when you first log in, sorry, I was on the wrong screen there. Uh, you're going to see something that looks kind of like this, you know, hello, Brian. And they're trying to get present a bunch of courses to you. If you pay close attention, you'll see that there's something hidden down here called Code Kentucky Pre-Work. Um, I wish we could make that front and center so it was super obvious, but unfortunately, Pluralsight doesn't allow us to do that. So there's two ways. You can either look for this here, um, the Code Kentucky Pre-Work, or... What may be easier is you go to what are called channels. Just click right here in the corner, channels. And channels are like tracks, you know, they're, they're courses that you go through. And you don't have any yet, but if you look for company channels, that's going to show you all the tracks that we've created, all the channels, and you'll see Code Kentucky pre work there. So either of those paths that I just showed you is fine. You know, you go to channels, company channels, Code Kentucky pre work, or alternately, if you're on the main page, you just look for this Code Kentucky pre-work. And when you click on that, you're going to see five courses. Um, and so these are the courses you have to complete by that deadline, the August 22nd deadline. And um, they are basically an introduction to programming. So this is just the general, what is programming? Um, these couple are introducing front-end web development, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, so you're going to watch some guys talk about uh, coding and you're going to follow along, write some code yourself. Um, then we've got another course that's just about careers in software development, just so you can learn a little bit more about the, the professional world. And then finally is um, what's called an interactive course. You can see in this tiny little text, you may or may not be able to read it, but it says interactive down there. And this is a course that you actually have to write code. Like it will say, you know, hey, we need to do this in HTML, write it here. It's going to help you along. So it's not like a, a test or anything like that where you can fail it. You can keep trying at it and learn from it. So, um, but yeah, this is our way of assessing to make sure that you're going to be successful in the program and uh, that you're interested in this. Um, and so you do have to 100% complete it. And the best way to do that is to click this button here. It says join channel. And it'll start tracking your completion. And so you start watching these videos. And when you're at 100% here, you're done. When you finish it, uh, as long as you see 100% here and it's before the deadline, you're good to go. Just you, you're welcome to message us if you like. But basically, we're just going to check after the deadline's over. 
and find everybody who finished it and give them the information on orientation and getting started. Um, you want to focus on the pre-work, but for any of you enterprising uh, individuals who want to start learning on your own, you can jump right in. Uh, you can just start searching for stuff. Like you can browse and, you know, I want to learn software development and, you know, maybe I want to learn web development and some more HTML stuff. All these courses are available to you. Um, you have full access to Pluralsight to go through all these courses. But don't get sidetracked and not complete the, you know, I want to learn Python. Let's go do Python. And then, oh, no, I missed the deadline. You know, don't, don't put yourself in that situation. Um, make sure you get the pre-work done first. Um, and yeah, I think I just have one last thing. Where did my presentation go? There you are. Um, one last thing. Um, for say, as part of the workforce boards that I was talking about, we have access to a variety of services um, that may be able to help you out. Um, so we can connect you to options for loaner laptops uh, if you, uh, you know, may not have someone at home, um, get you all kinds of career prep services, interprep, prep, job, uh, job search assistance, but also uh, community uh, referrals to community programs and agencies. So there's career centers, there's um, all kinds of services out there that um, if you've got a barrier of some sort that's preventing you from being able to focus on this training or finding a job, reach out to us. We'll be happy to um, to talk with you, see if there's something we can do to get you connected to, to the right place. So um, yeah, so with that, um, I just want to throw this slide up real quick to get to know the team so far. We're actually still growing, so uh, we'll be expanding to this. Uh, like I said, Shannon Siders is our operations manager. You'll get to meet her soon enough. Um, she just unfortunately wasn't able to be here today due to a family emergency. Um, and then I'm Brian Lerman, the uh, program director. Um, I mostly help out on the back end. You actually generally won't see my face too much. Um, you'll be seeing the rest of the team more. And then Jackie, I think I saw you on here. Would you like to say hello real quick? Hey everyone, I'm Jackie Pillay and I'm the student community coordinator. Um, I'll be sending out reminders um, of things that that you need to um, complete, finish. If you're having any trouble with any of your um, training, just let me know and I'll, I'll um, try to get some help for you. Thanks, Jackie. And I see in the list, we got August here too. Glad you're able to join us, August. You wanna say hi real quick? Hey everyone, uh, please excuse my lighting. <laughs> I didn't get it together once before I was, but uh, my name is August Map, and uh, I'll be assisting you all with, uh, as a, a, a technical career coach in order to be able to help you all find uh, employment, as well as, you know, just give me some uh, little, little kinds of guidance, how to build your resume. Um, proper interview etiquette and all that kind of good stuff. So, of course, when I teach you the class, it's not going to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, didn't get August on this uh, staff introduction page yet because August hasn't technically started yet. His first day is in a couple weeks. So, uh, but he's got, he's familiar with the program. August and I have worked together through uh, some work here in, in Louisville and uh, he's going to be great for the team. And uh, yeah, so uh, you, you met Jackie, who'll be working with uh, the folks that are in Eastern Kentucky. And um, for those in Northern Kentucky, we're still identifying uh, who that person's gonna be, but we'll introduce them uh, as soon as they are on board. And yeah, that brings us to the end of the presentation. So um, if you have questions yet, or if you have questions, feel free to unmute and ask verbally, or you can type them in chat and we'll be happy to answer those there. Hi, this is Judy. Um... I need to get a new laptop, obviously, because my video doesn't work very well on this one. But when I purchase it, are there any special features I need to look for that um, make sure they have? Not really. Um, you know, if you have another use for the laptop in mind beyond this, focus on those. You actually, despite what many people may think, for this kind of stuff we're doing, you, won't, you don't need a super powerful laptop. So you can get a Windows laptop, a Mac. Uh, if you know what Linux is and you're interested in that, Linux is fine too. Um, and um, you know you don't need to break the bank for this class. Uh, something cheap will get you through this. Um, I would recommend avoiding uh, Chromebooks, though. Um, they won't always get you through everything you need for in the software development world. 
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is an active webcam necessary? Um, we really want to encourage that. I mean, we're not going to like kick you out if you can't get on camera for some reason. Um, but we've learned in Code Louisville in the past year and a half um, how much of a difference it makes seeing your fellow students. And um, you know, if everybody's got their camera off, the mentors or the staff or whoever's talking to you just they feel like they're talking to this void. Nobody gets excited about anything. Nobody wants to share and talk with each other. So um, is it strictly required to have a camera? No, but um, we really want you to. And uh, if you don't have one, let us know. We may even be able to find a solution for you. So what other questions? Wow, was that that good? Answered all the questions? So. Uh, I'll, I'll hang out for another few minutes just in case anybody, oh, uh, somebody's raising their hand. Maurice? Uh, will you still have access to Pluralsight after the class is over? That's a good question. Um, so my official answer is going to be no. Um, but the reality answer is what we do is we have a certain number of licenses, seats that we can give out. And um, basically, we try and work it on a rolling basis to where the new students obviously need their access. And then we cut off people that have had it for a while. So realistically speaking, you'll probably re retain access to Pluralsight for a few months, maybe, after you finish the class. Uh, but eventually, at some point, we'll have to turn off your, um, your access because just for cost reasons, we have to turn it over to the next incoming students. Um, but if you uh, want to continue your education, there are all kinds of resources online. You can get your own plural site account. They do offer individual accounts. You have to pay for them. Um, they're not free, but um, that is a, a thing you can explore. Um, is there a particular day uh, for the in-person, the online slash in-person class? Um, not yet. We will figure that out soon. Um, but we have a lot of factors to take into account. Um, your all schedules and availability, but also the mentors uh, that are going to be leading the class. Um, we have to make sure it works for them as well. So we're trying to lock that up here in the next few days. Um, my hope is that we'll be able to offer at least a couple nights options, maybe more, but probably two is what we're looking at um, for you all to choose from. Uh, and like I said, as soon as we know that for sure, we'll let you all know. Uh, but I can guarantee it'll be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. It's always those days. Uh, will we have access to recorded video from tonight? Um, yes. So hopefully this recording worked. I still see the recording button, so should be good there. Um, and uh, we'll probably send it out uh, via email, um, probably tomorrow, I would guess, so you can review. Uh, oh, it looks like I missed one. Uh, I work 10 hour shifts, Tuesdays and Thursdays, then at 6.30. Um, so that's probably something we should talk with you on an individual basis. Uh, if your schedule takes you into that six o'clock start time, um, we'll see if we can work something out, but I'll be honest with you. It can be difficult. Uh, we do expect participation in the class. Um, and there's a lot of important material that's covered in it. So if, if your work schedule conflicts with that, we'll, we'll have to get creative and see what we can work out. Any other questions? Will the in-person lectures be recorded so we can go back over them if we happen to be slower at understanding the material? Um, so first of all, just to clarify for the moment, um, if by in-person you mean the ones taught by the mentors, they're going to be virtual. Uh, they will be live. You know, there'll be an actual real person talking with you during those weekly uh, meetups, but it'll be online. Um, and yes, our intent is to uh, record them uh, so that you can have access to them uh, and review them if needed. Remind us, though, we sometimes forget. <laughs> All right. Um, if is there someone to talk with one on one, uh, I would recommend reaching out to the info at codekentucky.org email address. Um, that's where Shannon and, and Jackie are monitoring daily. Um, so just let us know what you need, what you need to talk about, uh, and we'll be happy to connect you with whoever can answer your questions. Uh, 
completed the full registration form last night. Um, so um, we're trying to send those out every day, but due to the family emergency, I don't think Shannon was able to knock it out today. So you should see your plural site tomorrow morning if you signed up either today or yesterday. Um, if you don't see it by like lunchtime tomorrow, just email us and we'll figure out what's going on. Um, but yeah, we'll get y'all everybody access to plural site. Will our mentors have dedicated office hours? Uh, good question. Um, so they are volunteers. I want to be clear with that one up front. So the, their main requirement is that they have to be there for the two hour evening class. Uh, there is something we'll give you access to called Slack. It's an online chatting tool. And the mentors will monitor that a few times throughout the week. And so if you have questions, um, you can ask in a text-based format and they can help you out so you don't have to wait all the way until next week to get help. Um, so there is a way to get help throughout the week. Um, and also our hope is that um, you all will help each other and be able to learn from one another. So can you see my dog? Eventually. Um, I, often you'll see her in this window right behind me. I've got a little bench for her to watch over her kingdom outside. Uh, her name's Espresso. She is a fantastic dog. And I'm sure you, if you get to know me, you'll see her. She's a constant president in my life. But uh, she's a Whippet uh, Labrador mix. And it is pure energy and fear. So, uh, we'll receive a we link weekly to each class. Um, basically, we're getting a little into the weeds with details. We'll get you all that stuff at orientation about how you get to class and stuff like that. Right now, I would like everybody just to focus on getting through the uh, the pre work and doing that the online work to get through it. And then, yeah, weekly classes we'll do with how you get connected to those at orientation. Oh, more than I. Oh. Uh, if you're uh, able, please mute yourself if you're not asking the question. Actually, it looks like I have the ability to do that. So uh, Marjorie asks, is there a textbook? Not for this class. We're not like a college class. Um, for it has its pros and cons. Um, your learning will come from online. Um, there is all kinds of resources out there you can learn on your own. Um, and there are all kinds of textbooks that you can pick up if you want to learn on your own. Um, there's basically anything on front end web development for beginners uh, would be perfect for this first 12 weeks and the pre work that we're talking about. Um, but it's a huge world. There's all kinds of topics. So a book is probably going to cover more than what we cover in this class. It's certainly going to cover more. All right. Any other questions? You got, okay. You guys have lots of questions, um, which is, I like to see that. Asking questions is a very good thing in this field. Very good. Uh, so I'm glad to see you all are asking lots of questions. Uh, if one were to excel in this class, are there opportunities to participate and help in future classes? Yes. So very good question. Um, we are all about exploration. We're all about helping everybody. So um, what we've been fortunate enough to be able to work out in Code Louisville, and I hope we'll be able to do the same here in Code Kentucky, is um, uh, optional third and even fourth classes for people that really want to learn more um, and are excelling, but just maybe you don't feel they're quite ready for that job leap. Uh, my hope is that we will be able to uh, offer additional classes for folks, um, depending on resources and mentors and stuff like that. And then um, one of the most amazing things in the Code Level program that I hope we repeat uh, and you know, lightning strikes twice here is Code Level has been around for six years now. And about half of the mentors in the program are graduates of the program from three to five years earlier. So they've gotten their, their years of experience and they want to give back to the program and help out. Um, and so, yes, if you've either got previous, previous experience or you found your success and want to give back, we would love to see you return to the program and mentor a future class. So fantastic question. All right. I'll give it another minute, see if there's any last questions. Uh, and uh, if you think of anything afterwards, uh, just email the info at account and we'll be happy to answer your questions. And uh, again, reminder, you do have to complete the pre-work. We're, we're serious about it. Uh, a lot of people signed up, want to be in. So we can't just say, you know, congrats, you're in. We want to make sure that you're interested. So get that pre-work done. Uh, go through the five floral site courses, ask lots of questions. Um, you know, do your research if you need. and uh, let us know what you need, but um, focus on that 
that pre-work. And then if you get that done, feel free to explore some of the other courses on Pluralsight and just learn for the learning's sake. So I don't see any of the questions. So uh, we'll go ahead and call that a night. Um, and I thank you all for coming. I look forward to having you in the program um, and working with you all and seeing you succeed. And just in case any last thing comes up, I'll hang out for just uh, you know three or four more minutes uh, if anybody comes up with anything. But otherwise, good to see you all and uh, have a good evening. Hey there. Hey, Veronica. Hi. I just want to say thanks so much. I'm really excited about this. When I saw it, I thought, you know, is this going to be some silly thing I'm going to click on or is this going to be <laughs> helpful? <laughs> so, well, we hope we'll be helpful. That's our goal. So, yeah, you know, I was looking into it and looked a little online. I, um, I've been busy, you know, with the, this whole COVID uh, nightmare that we're having with, you know, all my work, my child, everything's all blurry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, I understand. So I looked in a little bit and this seems like a really good opportunity and I'm very excited to be part of it. I um years ago when my my eight year old was um, a baby, I tried to um get into tech. I tried, you know, the community college route and I just felt um not really helped. I felt like I was just a fish in the pond and just struggling to get through with no real help um, at all from someone who really knew what they were talking about, somebody who worked in the field and who was helpful, um, which was sad. You know, as mm. our community college system here in this state, it's a pretty big deal. Um, a lot of people go that route. I'm in Eastern Kentucky, so that's mm. it's a big thing for us out here. Um, so it was discouraging um, to say the least. So this already feels as if I have more help than I did throughout that entire experience. And I just thank you very much for that. I'm well, excited. Glad we're here. I hope it uh, turns out to be something you enjoy. Thank you, me too. Yep. All righty. Well, I don't see any other questions. So um, we'll go ahead and call that a night. Thanks everybody. Good job, Brian. Oh, hey, Ian. I didn't even see you there. Yep. Sorry, I wouldn't give you a chance to introduce yourself. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You All need right. to introduce the most important person, Jackie. That's okay. <laughs> Very good. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.